greetings to all youtube viewers i hope you guys have enjoyed my previous youtube teaching sessions my name is paresh naik and we are going to continue on the nasal bone anatomy before that please do like subscribe and you can put down some questions queries and if there is something controversial you feel you can write it down so today we are going to talk about sorry i am going to talk and you guys are going to listen to the palate and bone so if you feel that i am incorrect or passing any controversial statements please write down in the comment section so the palate and bone mm well in my early training days i didn't even know that this bone existed i'll be honest the palate and bones these are paired l shaped can you see this whatever the highlighted part that is the bone this is one section one side this is the other side okay and so this palate and bone as you can see it's l shaped uh which you can see from behind from behind and also from front you can see l shaped the mirror image this bone is located at the back of the nasal cavity as you can see so we are looking over there this is the orbit maxilla zygomatic bone nasal bones and behind the posterior part of the nasal cavity this is the palate and bone this is actually very important when you start operating this has got lot of significance the palate and bone is located as mentioned at the back of the nasal cavity between the maxilla and the sphenoid there's the sphenoid for you which is attached behind so let's start from the basics so what is does this palate and bone do they form the hard palate let's see from quite obvious they form the hard palate along with the maxillary bone that that is what we know also it forms the floor of the nasal cavity quite obvious the palate and bones are located at the back of the nasal cavity as mentioned before moreover the palate and bone also contributes to the structural framework to the inferior orbital fissure that's over here and pterygo palatine and pterygoid fossa that will be behind over here so each bone consists of a horizontal plate and a perpendicular plate it has got few processes so let's talk about what does it have the first one is a, is a pyramidal process this is a pyramidal process okay quite obvious well marked the other one is an orbital process so where is the orbital process this structure which is forming a part of orbit that is orbital process the third is the sphenoidal process and the sphenoidal process is this part which articulates with the sphenoid bone it has got uh, two plates as we know the perpendicular plate which is the vertical one it has got two surfaces one is a nasal surface and a maxillary surface what we need to know over here is something called as spinopalatine notch can you see this notch so this is very important the spinopalatine notch together with the body of sphenoid the, so the sphenoid will come over here okay so this notch along with the body of sphenoid it will form the spinopalatine foramen true so this is the nasal cavity okay on this area will be your spinopalatine foramen let's talk on this part so this is the nasal cavity that's the inferior turbinate that's the spinopalatine foramen why are we talking so much about spinopalatine foramen because for spl ligation and also in case cases of jna we keep on talking about this foramen there is a video uh 
which is shown over here that you can see spinopalatine artery cautery and ligation moving forward let's have a look at the clinical significance i will just cover some points the first thing is regarding the spinopalatine notch this is the area where the spinopalatin notch is there and that will correspond to the spinopalatin foramen so whenever you are doing a spinopalatin artery identification for cautery ligation or gaining access have a look at this that's the middle turbinate now i'm going to have a look from the posterior aspect okay so that is again the middle turbinate this is the area where it gets turned and gets attached okay that's the tail of the middle turbinate that's where it joins the palatine we have to make an incision just lower to that that gives an access to the spinopalatine foramen okay point 1 done so again spinopalatine foramen identification tail of the inferior turbinate you can go directly over there at times you see crystal thermodialis over there the second point nowadays we are doing lot of uh, office based procedure that is procedures under local anesthesia and then there you go you require local anesthesia so this greater palatine foramen is something which is very useful for us if we identify this and give a block over there with local anesthetic agent you can actually do a great amount of sinus surgery under local anesthesia thirdly recently i did a few adult coronal atresia cases so in those cases i removed the vomer and rostrum that is a posterior part and this area the posterior most part of the floor of the nasal cavity i raised the flap from there and which covered the raw surface of the bone this technique is widely used by uh, professor castelnova and also uh, shah zamad and lot of other renowned rhinologist so use this put it over there you will get a really good result next time when you whenever you have a look at a scan or go for spinopalatine artery surgery please remember this video and this will actually help you to imagine when you are going for the surgery there is a video regarding the uh, endoscopic spinopalatine artery cautery and ligation you can click and watch many thanks for this next time we will have a look at the spinoid bone that is one of the really important bones it can be a long video session please be prepared or you can watch in parts thank you for listening hope you like this videos please like subscribe and suggest we are going to continue with our paranasal sinus videos and also some radiology videos coming soon see you